On the anniversary of Agat's death, the court began with a moment of silence to mark the day and then kicked off with a heated debate between the state and its prosecutors. Prosecutors believe the state is dragging its feet. Being in the turmoil matter where counsel will bear me out, counsel was there in court. We simply gave a surname and that file was made available. Therefore, my, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, this is my problem, understanding why is it that it's such a problem to get a simple file. An allegation the state refutes. Castro told the inquest the apartheid government was at pains to explain why there had been so many deaths in detention. He says the security police spread false claims. There was a document, as uh, council mentions, bar the falsification that last part stands for. Right. And uh, look, in your affidavit from paragraph 20, you, you helpfully provide the court with an analysis. Um, but perhaps I can ask you to analyse for the court's benefit why you are of the view that those last five paragraphs constitute a falsification. Yes, indeed, Your Lordship. Um... Uh, perhaps I can start by asking you. Uh, given um, that rather stark statement, rather commit suicide than to betray the organization, um, was it ever policy of the SACP to encourage suicide in those circumstances? Emphatically not, Your Lordship. Emphatically not. Never, ever, at all. The inquest continues. Hasina Gori, SABC News, Johannesburg. Well, for more on this story, we cross to our reporter, Nozin Dombi Mia in Johannesburg. Thanks very much, Nozin Dombi. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Nompu. It certainly has been quite an interesting morning here at uh, the inquest into the death of Dr. Neil Agat. 38 years since his death, uh, and certainly the court uh, began with a moment of silence. But before we get into some of uh, what happened in the court proceedings, Nompu, I have uh, Jill Berger, who is Neil Agat's uh, sister, who's going to talk to us about the commemoration that they had for Neil Agat at the West Park Cemetery. Thank you so much for joining me, um, Jill. Jill, just tell me what happened uh, this morning. We met at the West Park Cemetery besides besides uh, Neil's uh, grave, which is in a beautiful spot underneath a beautiful jacaranda tree facing a little copy there. Um, a number of people were there and we it was arranged by the Cathrada Foundation and um, they very kindly allowed, allowed um, a group of people to come and speak about their memories of Neil and uh, also to have a quiet time where we could think, pray, whatever we wished to do. Um, it was very moving. It was very emotional um, to be there beside, um, beside his grave where I'd been, you know, just less than a, a week less than 32 years ago at his funeral, which was a tragic and overwhelming affair when there were so many people there. So it was a nice opportunity to visit his grave and we laid flowers at the grave and mem remembered Neil as he really was, a fine person with huge integrity, with huge compassion. And um, it's so lovely for me to hear other people speak of him in such glowing terms, and he was very special. Yeah. Jill, before the court started, uh, we had a moment of silence. And obviously, it shows that the court is giving the Agate family support. How does that make you feel? You've been through this since the first inquest of 1982, and 38 years later, you're still at it again. How does that make you feel that you are getting that support in this second inquest? I am uh, very, very pleased I'm getting that support and you know I'm very grateful to the NPA for opening this inquest reopening the inquest I'm just so sad that it's taken so long to do it 38 years during which my parents have died my elder brother has died and I've been widow things have changed and my family should be here hearing the truth but unfortunately they too have gone as 
have his interrogators, it appears they too have died, so no one is going to stand justice for this, these crimes that they committed against him. And you know, Jill, that really talks to the issue of um, the letter that was submitted to the President last year requesting that many more of these inquests uh, are opened so that there is justice for the families uh, of those uh, uh, detainees who died in prison. This is certainly the case, and I've experienced it personally here. I've had um, several women approach me who went to the TRC and were promised some sort of retribution, justice, I don't know what, but have heard nothing since then. Mm -hmm. And they want their cases open. They want their stories told, and they want justice. Mm -hmm. And I feel very, very deeply for these people, and I do know the NPA is doing all it can to... To, to seek that justice. Yeah. So a very difficult day for you. Thank you so much, Jill, Jill Berger. Nopo, that's uh, Jill Berger. Just uh, giving us uh, some of her thoughts about uh, having the NPA reopen several cases of uh, former detainees who died uh, while in detention and also telling us about the work uh, that they had done uh, earlier this morning in remembering uh, Neil Agate on the 38th year of his death. Thanks very much for that, Nozindombi. Over to you.